So if you're building a Zenith and you want to use UL Power, just buy the whole firewall forward package. So just do that. Just do that because this was a huge headache trying to figure out all the stuff that we had and didn't have and it's very frustrating. Disclaimer, just because we do it doesn't mean you should. I think mostly what's on here is what you just get with the engine. But now I want to show you some of the additional uh, items that we got. Actually, yeah, you know what, now's a good time for me to point out. So this stuff in this box is what we got from UL Power. And so it's, you know, uh, um, a lot of the stuff, basically um, the stuff that's in the installation manual, I'm pointing to it right now. The stuff that's in the installation manual is, is pretty much what we got with the engine. Like we had to buy it additionally. So like UL Power, I don't understand why, why would you, like you have to have this stuff to run the engine. So like, why wouldn't you just include all the, this different stuff like an oil cooler, which, which is not included with the engine. I don't know. But anyway, this is what, was, what we picked up with the engine. And then over here, this is actually the firewall forward kit from Zenith. And it took us a while to figure out like th that we should have just bought this entire kit. We should have bought the whole firewall forward package from Zenith. So if you're building a Zenith and you want to use UL Power, just buy the whole firewall forward package. It's going to be all the firewall forward stuff there, all this engine stuff here, the engine, the uh, engine mount, uh, what else? The cowling up there, that big gray whale looking thing. It's gonna, it's just gonna be all that stuff. So just do that. Just do that because this was a huge headache trying to figure out all the stuff that we had and didn't have and it's very frustrating. So anyway, um, a lot of this stuff, you know, fuel lines, uh, throttle cable, oil lines, mounting plates, wires, uh, all kinds of different stuff. Another gascalator. Uh, that comes in here. I'm not gonna go through this right now because I kind of want to just mostly focus on the UL power side of things that, that you will see in the installation manual. And we'll talk about that in another video, I think. Let me know if you're interested in ab about that stuff. Uh, okay, so we've got, and I'm just gonna go through this real quick just so you can kind of get an idea of what it looks like in someone's hands. So these are the uh, brackets for the exhaust right there and they're going to mount up to that bolt somewhere probably like right there and they're going to hold it in place probably one like that and they support the exhaust here we have some ignition uh leads lead wire for our sp uh, spark plugs here we have and there's another one just like this we have the coil right here the ignition coil it's a pretty heavy thing really ignition coil Ooh, look at that Nice. So, um, okay, I'm gonna get distracted again now, but hopefully if you watch this far, you're just, you're just gonna watch the whole video. This is the ignition coil, and you'll notice that this is not a magneto, which is fantastic, because magnetos are really heavy, and you have to like time them and stuff, and do maintenance on them and stuff. This thing is all basically sealed up, and it's very precise, and it's, this is pretty much just plug and play, which is uh, pretty fantastic. So no old magneto technology on this thing, which is great. So we've got some like various uh, tubes and hoses, lines and stuff, like for fuel and whatnot. We have, this is the uh, fuel connection kit. There, there might be some stuff missing from here, but uh, we have some more fuel lines. I wonder if they gave us duplicates. I'm not sure. We've got some banjo fittings, blah, 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 hose clamps. Uh, this thing, probably for the filter, probably. And then we have, in this box, we have the, uh, well, this is the, uh, this is the double fuel filter bracket thing right there. And we'll see all the, you know, you'll I'll probably make videos of, of putting all this stuff together. So you'll, you'll probably see it again. We've got the actual, uh, see another uh, fuel pump right there. We have uh, hose clamps. We have this thing, right? Let's see. What else do we have? In there? We've got uh, oh, just like a, okay, a double banjo fitting thingy, uh, little caps, little, little, little things, um, and then our coarse 
uh, filter, looks like. So, okay, here's the thing. This thing right here, again, as you'll see in the installation manual, um, so this, this right here is uh, how you, you, you put your two pumps, a pump here and a pump here, and then you have your uh, fuel inlet right here. So fuel's coming through here, and then it goes to pump one and pump two. Now, I don't know, I could be totally wrong about this. I've been wrong at least once before, but the thing is, UL Power, um, UL Power says this in the installation manual, and other people have said the same, is that uh, you, can, you don't want to run both pumps continuously. Uh, well, one reason is you're just kind of wasting electricity, but the other thing is that um, one of the pumps will overheat. Uh, because there's not enough fuel flowing through it. Now it seems to me that because you have fuel coming through here, your fuel is first going to go to your first pump, and then whatever is kind of left over is going to go to your second pump. So you're going to have lo it seems like you'd have lower pressure because it's just gravity from from your wings to here, and then you're going to it seems like you'd have lower pressure at your second pump. So it seems like this pump, because the way this is designed, is always going to be the hot one. I could be wrong though, I don't know, they didn't say which pump it was, but it seems like if you had your fuel coming in right here and it was like a T-joint, it seems like then it would be more even in terms of where the fuel goes, but anyway, that's just a little side note, I don't know, what do I know, I'm not a engine manufacturer or whatever, let's see here, alright, and... Oh yeah, and then this little this little thing. This is actually came on the engine. This is just a little like a uh, screw, um, basically just a threaded tube. And this actually, this would actually go right here uh, before the, I put on this sandwich plate. And this is this is how you attach the uh, oil filter. Okay, so and this this is the additional fuel pump kit. I think no 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 that's what this was. That was the additional fuel pump kit that goes in there. Okay, and then we have this lovely box of random stuff. We have our oil air uh, separator, or our, our, our breather, engine breather right here. So let's see, it looks like this is gonna be your return line. Uh, this is gonna be your input, and I guess that's just for air. That's just takes in air right there, or allows your engine to breathe. So that way you don't build up pressure in your engine and then it goes kaboom, because uh, that's usually not a good sound. We've got our, another coarse uh, filter which connects like right up to the, the right in front of the uh, pump. Did I put that in there? Oh, I guess I put that, that goes to the oil cooler. These are just little, little nut things. Uh, that actually, this came, this came with the firewall forward kit actually, but I'll just put it in here so I don't forget it. We got our uh, mounting brackets for our ignition coils. Uh, this little guy right here is our, um, uh, regulator rectifier. So we're going to mount this on a plate and then in the firewall forward kit is the actual uh, metal bracket and the tubing and everything, the scat tubing, scat hose to go uh, to allow uh, air to come in and cool this um, regulator. So this is good. And here we have a bunch of uh, connections for our spark plugs. This is for the oil uh, um, oil cooler sandwich plate thing to connect the lines to that. These are uh, doodads that connect the dealy to the to the thingy. Uh, here we go. These are actually oh these are the actual these actually connect to the uh, wait which one is it? Now I'm confused. This should these go spark plugs. These connect. Yeah, these should connect to the ignition coils. Here we have uh, some springs for the exhaust setup. We've got our little cut out, our little plastic thingies that go in the uh, that go in the. These are for the ignition coils to go through the baffling. Oh yeah, baffling. I forgot about that baffling. Here we have some little rubber mounts for the ECU. Another uh, fuel pump. And let's see, more hose clamps and our uh, filter, fuel filter. So I guess this would be a fine filter and there's only one fine filter. So I guess what it is is, uh, I think it's yeah, fuel out after, the, after it 
gets goes through the fine fil the coarse filter, the pump, and then the fine filter, and then it uh, flows out of there. And you might notice that if if you're building a Zenith, you might notice that in the uh, it, well, this one among other things in the assembly guides, they show like hooking up, uh, you know, sensors or different kinds of uh, or, or hardware to accommodate sensors. And that would be if you aren't getting your sensor, your like in this case fuel pressure information from your ECU. So like if you're using steam gauges, you can't hook those up to the, you know, to the ECU. So you would need to have a an additional sensor. Um, that's you know dedicated to uh, sensing the fuel pressure and then sending it to whatever instrument you have in the cockpit. So fun side note there. What's under here? Oh, oh yes, of course. <clears throat> and of course, the piece of resistance, we have the engine control unit, also known as the ECU or EQ. Nobody says EQ. And... It's actually quite um, quite anticlimactic because it's just this. It's just this. Uh, so you can see all the pins in there. Don't want to damage those. It's just um, two ports that hook up to those uh, wire bundles. Like I said, you have your in port, your in po in port, and your out port. Your little um, static uh, static pressure thing right there. And that's it. It just, uh, you just bolt it onto the cabin side of the firewall. And it just sits there and hopefully just does its, does its little thing. And um, that's all there is to it. It's all sealed up. And they say, do not open. Probably shouldn't open this. Uh, probably should just let it do what it does as long as it keeps doing it. And this is uh, what makes this engine so awesome compared to like a traditional aviation style engine that's using technology from like the 1950s is uh, you've got a little computer here that's talking to everything and synchronizing it and making it as efficient as possible and all you have to do is basically say you know I want more go-go power or less go-go power and uh, that's what it'll do Okay, here we have the baffles, the cooling baffles. This is sharp, so I have to be careful. So we've got the baffles right here, and I am so glad. Actually, wait a minute. I'm not actually sure if, if, if we're going to have to cut this. I feel like we are. I feel like we are going to have to cut this. But I feel like there's also been a lot of work that's already been done. We don't have to cut out a lot of things. So you can see we've got, you know, we already have holes for the, for the ignition leads. Uh, let's see, does this one have an extra hole? For, no, it doesn't for the cooling stuff. But anyway, so these go on here like so. You know, so you have to you put everything on uh, something like this. Eh, I don't want to try and get it on perfectly. But basically, it goes on there, and then uh, it provides uh, airflow over you know directed over and through the cylinders which is great for cooling purposes now and again you will need other stuff to actually like make all this stuff work like there are other little baffle plates and things specifically for you know cooling this engine just the right amount that you're going to get with the zenith firewall forward package that is not included with the engine oh yeah just for funsies, here's a look at the uh, this oil cooler that I got. It's too small. I didn't realize that. It's pro it's probably for like the the 260 or whatever the smaller version is of this, but it'll go right uh, right on here. It'll just uh, it'll be mounted on right there, just to kind of give you an idea of where the oil cooler goes. And then we have these lines that connect from here to here and there and there. And I think finally. We have the muffler right here, which is going to collect all of the uh, exhaust and then send it out through this port right here. This uh, one already has all the brackets um, welded on and everything, which is great. Unfortunately, or maybe not unfortunately, but the, uh, the final exhaust pipe does not have any sort of brackets on it. Uh, there should be some brackets in here. 
Where are those brackets? There should be. They should be in here. I think I'm, I'm, I may have missed them, but there's there should be some brackets included uh, to to attach the springs to actually attach the uh, exhaust pipe right here to the uh, muffler. So I guess the the idea is that you can cut this and uh, install this however you want, and then once you figure out how you want it, you can weld on the brackets. Unfortunately, I don't actually know how to weld. Well, I kind of do, but I don't actually have the equipment to weld right now. So we're gonna have to take this to somebody once we figure out how we want it and then have them weld it in place. And so that's basically gonna come out, you know, I don't know, something like that. Come out there, maybe like that, maybe like, maybe like this. Ooh, maybe like that. I don't know, it could just be any number of ways, really. Oh, and in addition to the firewall forward kit, we also got the cabin heat kit from Zenith, which hopefully works out well. I wonder if we're, I wonder if we need more scat tubing. Is some of this tubing supposed to be? No, that's not right. Anyway, uh, but yeah, so we also got the cabin heat kit, which has, I'll just show you. I mean, this is, we're getting out of the scope of UL power, but what the heck, why not? So this is the little uh, shroud that goes on the muffler and um, I don't know, hopefully this will work well. I think I'm gonna modify some of this so that it actually dumps the heat when it's not being used because I'm just not sure how, if the, I'm not, I don't want any heat getting into the cabin like slipping through these, uh, <coughs> slipping by these butterfly valves. Oh yeah, oh, these are aluminum. Probably, I mean, these probably are aluminum. But it sure doesn't feel like stainless steel. Uh, I feel like stuff could definitely slip through that. So we probably want to hmm, figure something out. I, I was thinking about like, what if you, what if you had like, um, like right here, cause you're going to have this on the inside, this on the outside. Oh, matching those up is going to be interesting. Why is it shaped like that? Interesting. Anyway, I was thinking about like, what if you made holes right here? Just like, not huge holes, but holes like that. So that way, you know, when you have this open, you'd mostly, you'd still mostly get the heat, but then if it's closed, you have this back pressure, but then the heat could escape. It'd be easier for the heat to go out that way instead of try and get past this butterfly valve. I don't know, just something to think about. Something to think about. Man, there's always something to think about when you're building an airplane. Oh. There you go, folks. There's sort of a uh, somewhat brief introduction familiarization with the UL Power uh, 350 IS engine. And again, uh, I'm sure I forgot something. And also, you know, I didn't really go over any of like the super technical specs or whatever. But because the thing is, is at the you know the the bottom line is when you're just trying to assemble everything, it doesn't matter like how much horsepower it has or what the compression ratio is or you know, blah, 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 all this sort of stuff. That's, that's like once you actually get everything assembled and it's operational and stuff, uh, that's when that stuff actually matters. What matters right now is like, what is this part? Where does it go? And how do I put it there? So anyway, hopefully this was helpful. Um, if you have questions, cause I'm sure you probably do, cause I probably left something out. Um, leave a comment below and maybe I can make a video about that later or something along those lines. I'm gonna get back to doing some other stuff and getting this airplane going, so I'll see you next time.